naturally better. It's 9 o'clock. Time for news. Now, from Fox 7, this is the Tri-State's only one-hour newscast. Fox 7 First News. Hi, I'm Jennifer Grant. And I'm Randy Moore. First on Fox tonight, a controversy over a hairdo. A McLean County middle school football player has attempted school spirit, doesn't score points with the faculty. Matthew Johnson dyed his hair to match the team color. But as Fox 7's Adrian Nobles tells us, his new do could keep him from enjoying the school tradition. Like any football team, McLean County Middle School needs spirit and support to win. And 12-year-old Matthew Johnson thought he'd found a creative way to show it. I was really disappointed because I thought I was... I thought everybody was going to go along with it and like it. But Matthew was told by the principal he couldn't get his picture made for the yearbook with his team. And he must keep his helmet on during games. She says his hair color is disruptive to education. Matthew's mom thinks it's discrimination. I don't understand if it's such a disruption to education why they're still allowing him to be in the classroom. But McLean County school administrators think they made the right decision. They say school colors should stay on signs, not on hair. But I did feel like being in these pictures is a privilege. We don't have to do that yearbook. The school has no written policy on hair color. That's why Matthew still gets to go to school and play ball. But Principal Clark is allowed to make her own judgment calls. And the superintendent supports her decision. What's wrong with the public school saying that we won't have high standards for personal grooming habits, personal hygiene, uh, personal behavior. But Matthew and his mom won't budge either. He says he'll keep the color until the end of the school year. In McLean County, Adrian Nobles, Fox 7 First News. Superintendent Malloy says the football team can have their picture retaken if Matthew changes his hair, hair, but Matthew and his mom say they were never told that. We are getting a very nice rain out there. It is very nice. Here's Ron with a look at how much we're getting. It's adding up. It's not adding up quite enough, fast enough, but it will. And we've got a lot of rain waiting to the south that's headed our way. I'll show you radar coming up uh, later. But first of all, it's 7 o'clock tomorrow morning where there's a chance uh, for rain. And we're going to have that chance all day long tomorrow. Will it extend into Sunday as well? I'll tell you just how soggy our weekend's going to be. Take a Fox 7 fly-through, show you where the heaviest rain is right now, too. That'll be coming up in about nine minutes. All right, Ron, thanks a lot. Tonight's rain did more than just soak the football players out there. It also relieved the dangerously dry conditions, so much that Indiana Governor Frank O'Bannon lifted the open burning ban for the entire state. Firefighters throughout Indiana are also relieved after battling grass fires for the last three months. O'Bannon says southern Indiana suffered the most during the dry spell because many storms broke up or moved to the north before coming to our area. The two mayoral candidates heard from some of Evansville's younger citizens today, part of the second annual Wrights District Leadership Project. 60 student council members from seven Evansville schools talked with Boris and Lloyd about how to improve the community. The kids picked a community project to work on. Issues included Mesker Park Zoo, leadership, and the city pool system. One student says it's important for kids to know the candidates. I think that we have a lot of good ideas and that we should be able to share them with them so that uh, we can have a say in what our city does too. Last year, the students gave baskets of household supplies to new Habitat homeowners as their community project. This year, they'll help spruce up the zoo. Have you made up your mind on who you're going to vote for? Boris and Lloyd sparred in their final televised debate earlier this week. The tone has been set. Lloyd refused to sign Boris' clean campaign pledge. Lloyd says it's just a gimmick to try to get him to ignore Boris' record. Now the candidates are attacking one another. If you missed this debate live, don't worry. You have one more chance. You can see a rebroadcast of the debate right here on Fox 7. It's tomorrow night at 11. Again, Saturday at 11, right here on Fox 7. The countdown is on to see who Evansville will pick to be the city's next mayor. Last night, we showed you how a Russ Lloyd Jr. administration could be a very similar one to that of our current mayor. The catch, Lloyd is a Republican and the mayor is a Democrat. Fox 7's Sam Walker explores where that leaves Democrat challenger Rick Boris, comparing what his administration would be like to our current mayor, Frank McDonald. Rick Boris is considered a traditional Democrat by many observers, a man who believes government can solve problems. Rick Boris and his staff spent the afternoon passing out these brochures, explaining why he thinks he should be your next mayor. 
His style differs from current mayor Frank McDonald in that he wants more money for social programs. McDonald is fiscally conservative. During his administration, the city experienced economic growth. The economic uh, boom that we're in right now, that he, he has to get some of the credit for that. He would certainly get the blame if it were the opposite. As Mayor McDonald focused on bringing new businesses to the area, like assisting in bringing the Toyota plant here. Borey says his administration will focus on improving roads and highways, more funding for education with emphasis placed on single parents and the working poor, and assisting in the creation of small businesses. Use the city's resources wherever possible to work with small businesses, to empower uh, those uh, uh, small businesses, particularly with minorities and women. McDonald did well enough among Republican voters to win the mayor's race three different times. And although the mayor might be closer to Republican Lloyd than fellow Democrat Boris, Boris is counting on the mayor's constituency so the Democrats can win again. Sam Walker, Fox 7 First News. Boris has the endorsement of Indiana's Democratic Senator Evan Bayh and the state's Democratic Governor Frank O'Bannon, but he does not have the endorsement of our outgoing mayor, Frank McDonald, also a Democrat. A Democratic candidate for Congress is blasting Congressman John Hostetler for voting against the Patients' Bill of Rights, which passed the House yesterday. Dr. Paul Perry of Newburgh says Hostetler didn't even vote for a compromise measure sponsored by Republican leadership. Hostetler, in fact, was one of only eight members of Congress who didn't vote for either version. In other words, he didn't vote for any reasonable form of patient protection legislation. Hostetler was traveling from Washington to Evansville today and was unavailable for comment. Tonight, Evansville is moving towards construction on the long-awaited I-69. Today, contractors submitted bids to see who will build the highway. Contractors will have until November 5th to submit their bids. After that, the city hopes to have the project completed in 18 to 24 months. Several cities are lobbying to bring the Canada to Mexico link through their area, but Indiana has been tied up with environmental issues in deciding a route. A missing Spencer County girl is now in a juvenile detention center in Vincennes. 17-year-old Amanda Pickrell's mother reported her missing last month. Rockport police suspected she ran away with her boyfriend, Chris Goffinette. Today, she was found at Goffinette's house. He was arrested and charged with false informing. A law to protect communities from sex offenders failed a tri-state woman. This man, William Ray Trent, is a convicted sex offender. He was released from prison in June. The new law alerted the Henderson community that he was of high risk to commit another sex crime. And just this week, he went back behind bars, this time accused of rape. Trent served 10 years for sodomy and kidnapping. The lost and found section of today's Evansville Courier and Press lists five missing black cats. And one cat owner thinks those disappearances are Halloween related. Patty John's black cat, named Seven, has been missing since Sunday. Johns has talked to other people whose black cats are also missing, and she's afraid someone may be even using the cats for a satanic ritual. She's offering a $500 reward for seven. To the person, I'd just like for them to return my cat. Um, I have a, a generous reward for them if they just, they can come here day or night, any time of the day. And um, I don't have to see their face. I just want my cat. Seven's food dish, cat house, and favorite chair are still in place in the hope he'll turn up terror in the tri-state. Emergency workers say it's only a matter of time before we're hit with some kind of weapon of mass destruction. Fox 7's Kathy Morris introduces us to one man whose training may help save lives when the inevitable hits. A cult group sends sarin gas through the Tokyo subway system, killing 12 people, injuring more than 5,000. A month later, closer to the tri-state, a massive bomb goes off at the Oklahoma City Federal Building, killing 168 victims. The local uh, hate groups and patriot groups are actually accelerating, and uh, they can get a lot of information out there on the airwaves today. Lieutenant well, Randall Jenkins is prepared for an attack. He just returned from a week of training on weapons of mass destruction, like bombs, nerve gas agents, biological agents, and radiation exposure. You actually work with nerve gas in protective suits just to imprint upon you the seriousness of the situation. 
When a chemical or biological agent is released into the air, it can kill a few hundred people. But Lieutenant Jenkins says if the wind happens to catch it, it can knock out a city's entire population. It actually shuts down the respiratory system, causes seizures, and it's, it's very fast acting. Jenkins attended the training for free, but part of the deal is that he will teach other local emergency workers what he's learned. We're getting there. We've still got a long way to go, but we're more prepared now than we were. Hopefully all emergency workers will be prepared before the tri-state becomes a target. Kathy Morris, Fox 7 First News. Terrorists have recently started aiming their hate at emergency workers as well, like the second bomb that injured police at the Atlanta abortion clinic. The Indiana National Guard, as well as guards in other states, are forming teams to help if terrorists attack. They're called RAID, Light Element Teams. The acronym stands for Rapid Assessment and Initial Detection Elements. They've been set up by the Department of Defense. And that is manned by um, traditional National Guardsmen who will get training in um, areas that they can assess the situation, advise uh, the local uh, law enforcement, um, define any requirements needed, and employ really any kind of emergency equipment and, and that sort of thing. The National Guardsmen would use equipment like this to respond to weapons of mass destruction disaster. It is Friday and there is football action on both sides of the river and across the Wabash tonight. The scores are starting to come in and Rich Miller is at the Fox Box with our first check on the action. Sort of a David versus Goliath story down in Owensboro tonight. Hancock County is in town to play one of the larger schools in the tri-state, Apollo. Mark McVicker still gloating over his hole-in-one earlier in the day is on the sideline where this game has reached the fourth quarter. And uh, Mark, you've got the update. Mark. A uh, windy day, Rich. I couldn't have hit a hole in one in these conditions. It's <laughs> rainy and windy right now in Owensboro. And you mentioned David and Goliath. Well, get out your stone because David, Hancock County, slaying Goliath big time. 33-7 as we move into the late stages of the third quarter. Quick look in at the action right now as Hancock County has the ball. Travis Atwell has been as advertised as uh, they just punted the ball now to Apollo, and that's Brandon Adams, the quarterback. He just threw for a touchdown pass, and it looks like he's going deep for another. Has a man open, and almost our first live look-in touchdown of the season there, but Atwell, the opposing quarterback for Hancock County in white, the story, he's run for three, he's thrown for one, and right now it's all Hornets, 33-7. Full highlights and reaction coming later. Rich? Grab a towel and dry off, and we'll see you later, Mark. Thanks a lot. At Inlow Field tonight, Harrison leads Memorial. 15-3 is the score. That one, pretty good ballgame over there in the fourth quarter. And South Spencer leads North Posey 33-0 in the second half. More scores and highlights later in the hour, plus an extra inning playoff game between the Braves and Astros. Back with those highlights and much more about 940. Randy and Jen? Looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. For working parents, daycare is a must, but how do we know which ones are safe? Next to 7 on your side, education report with tips on what we should look for to make sure our kids are safe. Then in our cover story, many kids commit crimes and their parents don't understand why. We'll show you why researchers say it's usually the parents' fault. But first, the storms are here and Ron takes us into them next in his exclusive fly-through look. You are watching Fox 7 First News with Randy Moore, Jennifer Brandt, Chief Meteorologist Ron Rhodes, and Rich Miller with Fox 7 Sports. As mayor, two one hundredths of it, no, two tenths of an inch. I'll get it out of here. That's about all I've got on my rain gauge right now, but it's still ticking away slowly. We've got some rain out there, and at the airport, they've just got twelve one hundredths of an inch. Uh, I wish I were talking in terms of inches and not in hundreds or tenths of inches, but that's the way it is right now. But there's a lot more rain all the way. As we take a look at the Fox 7 fly-through, we'll check out the rain three-dimensionally. And you can see the showers and thunderstorms down along the Gulf, and that train is riding right up here with very few breaks. We've got a lot of rain to be had uh, by the time this is all moving on off to the east, and that won't be until later on in the weekend. I'll tell you when we can expect the rain to exit. Uh, this weekend. All that coming up in my first weather forecast. Uh, that'll be in about 10 minutes, guys. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Ron. Daycare is often the only option for working parents. And while most centers are safe, many could be better prepared for natural disasters. Seven on Your Side investigates what we should look for at our child's daycare. Parents can check several things, ranging from whether bookcases and shelves are secured to investigating whether false ceilings need additional supports. 
I would tell parents to go into their center or center that their child is going to be in and ask if the center is safe. Are things bolted to the walls? Do they have things to protect glass from shattering? Do they have protective cases on their light bulbs? For a checklist and information on organizing parents to help disaster-proof daycare centers, check out our website. That's at 7onyourside.com. Casino Astar is facing some stiff competition. It's almost a no-holds-barred um, posture that they've taken. Astar brings in millions of dollars for Evansville, but Dockside Gaming, just a couple of hours away, could leave Astar high and dry. A look at the competition, next. Portions of this newscast are brought to you by United Fidelity Bank. United Fidelity Bank, because it's your money. Is the down payment the only thing stopping you from buying a home? United Fidelity Bank can help with the borrower advantage. It's a zero down plan, no down payment required, or upfront closing costs. You have no out-of-pocket expense. Let United Fidelity's loan originators explain all the benefits of the zero down plan. Our loan process is fast, simple, and hassle-free. Home ownership is closer than you think. Call United Fidelity Bank because it's your money. United Fidelity member FDIC and equal housing lender. Do you ever just have one of those days? Well, at Farmers Insurance, everything we do is about getting things back to normal. Isn't that what insurance is supposed to do? Farmers, get you back where you belong. Today, you say goodbye to high school. And with you go the hopes and dreams and promise of America. Congratulations. American education is at an all-time low. Grades are falling. Schools are failing. What's the answer? Something called school choice. School choice will improve education by letting parents choose a school that's better for their child. Find out about school choice now, before it's too late. Kids deserve the chance. You deserve the choice. Call this toll-free number now to find out how school choice can improve education for your child. Casino Astar is under more pressure to survive now that Illinois Riverboat Casinos have a competitive advantage. Customers can now come and go as they please. Box 7's Peter Osborne looks at dockside gaming and its effect on Casino Astar. Players Island Casino in Metropolis last sailed in June, taking advantage of a new Illinois law legalizing permanent dockside gaming for riverboat casinos. No more boarding times and no more two-hour cruises to inconvenience customers. It just kills your day, really. You just got to plan for your whole day. The door is open. You win a little money and go home. <laughs> or, you know, you ain't got to wait two hours. Players is attracting new customers, once scared away by the possibility of missing a cruise, and management now feels its boat is more competitive with bigger casinos nearby. We have our advantages, uh, which is dockside. They have their advantages because they have more, uh, more space and they have more machines and more equipment. Casino Aztar's advantage is 172 more gaming positions than the Metropolis boat. But GM Jim Brown thinks some of his customers are trying dockside gaming in Metropolis even though players traditionally draws from a different area than Aztar. We have seen a drop off in business, mainly because of the convenience factor, so being able to come and go as you please. Because you wouldn't want to feel like once you got out there that you were stuck. But gamblers don't often get stuck on Aztar. When the boats dock, customers can leave whenever they want to. And through the first two-thirds of this year, Aztar remained docked for 74% of its cruise schedule canceling cruises because of bad weather, mechanical failure, and river traffic. Although players benefits from being dockside, Indiana Gaming Commission Director Jack Thar says Astar suffers while dockside. When boats cruise, it's generally been proven to show that people will end up losing a little bit more money. So it's not 
an advantage. And even when docked, ASTAR customers can only enter during preset boarding periods, not whenever they want, as at Metropolis. So ASTAR and other Indiana casinos may ask for partial dockside gaming with open boarding to keep pace with Illinois. Perhaps we can limit the amount of cruising to something like 100 cruises a year as they do in the state of Iowa, allow entry and exit at the customer's desires. Brown wants Indiana casinos to unite on this idea, possibly presenting it to the legislature next year as they try to tilt the playing field back in their favor. Peter Osborne, Fox 7 First News. Indiana is alone in the Midwest in requiring casinos to sail. Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, and Wisconsin all offer some form of dockside gaming or land-based casinos. Stocks moved higher as investors shrugged off the inflation hints contained in the government's monthly employment report. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained almost 113 points to close at 10,649. The Tri-State Index gained more than 13 points to end the week at 922. Much needed rain is here in the Tri-State. But how much will we get? Meteorologist Ron Rhodes is in next with his exclusive, exclusive future cast. The rain didn't stop football Friday. Rich steps into the Fox box and Mark takes us live to the sidelines of tonight's primetime clash. All the action in just 20 minutes. And it's good. It's time for Fox 7 First Weather with Chief Meteorologist Ron Rhodes. This is it. This is the beard-busting rain. It's not the drought-busting rain, but they have lifted uh, the banning, the burn ban across the state. The governor has done that, so that's good news there. We've gotten enough rain to see that done, so uh, now we're going to get some more rain. I think we're going to see up to an inch in many locations. Soggy weekend for a change. In fact, the rain's going to be off and on throughout the day tomorrow, but mainly on, and mainly on tonight, too, even though it's just light rain right now. We've got some heavy pockets just to our south. I'll show you Doppler 7 in a moment. 70 degrees for a high tomorrow. We're going to struggle to hit that, but the temperature's not going to fall that much either. It's going to be dropping down to 60 for an overnight low tonight, and that's it. We've got the, the rain inundating much of the area. This is a 12-hour loop. Earlier in the day, that brought us that tenth of an inch this morning. Then we saw a little line of rain that continued to flare up, and did they ever get some rain? Wait till you see some of the rainfall amounts they got in southern Illinois in our own backyard basically here the tri-state we got some heavy rain just not here in evansville yet but look at this big old mass of rain which is headed on up to the northeast we've got some pretty heavy pockets here even more down to the south we're going to get wet over the next 24 hours that's a guarantee i hate to see it for the pet parade but i like the fact we got some rain look at this there are no breaks somebody just called me up said ron i want to go down to the fall festival but i, I don't want to be caught in the rain uh do i have a chance I said, no, you don't have a chance. There's no breaks in the rain. It's just a mass of rain. Now, we had some breaks earlier today, but right now, here's where Evansville is. You go down to the south, and it's all moving up. We've got nothing but straight rain. I mean, I said, the best you're going to have is light rain, and at times, we're going to have some moderate rain, even some pockets, some fairly heavy rain. Uh, but anyway, over the course of the evening, we have seen uh, some rain move on through. Just light rain right now, but we have some heavier rain just down to our southwest. Uh, but uh, cloud cover wise, we are going to see a few breaks, I think, tomorrow afternoon. We might see a few breaks in the clouds, but uh, that's only after this continues to work its way on up to the northeast. But it's a big mass of clouds. Uh, what do we do see? We're just going to see a little bit of sunshine. The sunshine, for the most part, is going to hold off until Sunday. Forecast today, a high of 72. Didn't expect to see as much sun today as we actually saw. Fortunately, we get to slough off a loss. This is past 30 days on the three degree guarantee, so we're still standing at 77%. Nothing to brag about. Uh, 7 on your side .com. That's the web address. You can sign up for your chance to get a toast umbrella if Rhodes or Kerry Dean gets the three-degree guarantee right. And your daily weather email. We don't have to get anything right for that. We, well, the forecast. Uh, but we've got uh, the daily weather email. We'll just send that to you every day in your computer if you'd like that. Or you can send a postcard to Fox 7, Box 7, MSO 47701. It's actually now, the rain's still coming down. We've actually now got up to uh, 12 one-hundredths of an inch on Beard Check. So we're now at 42 one-hundredths of an inch. Still not quite to that half-inch mark, but I've got 22 one-hundredths here downtown. Um, 
and I had about the same uh, at my home on the north side. So, uh, but the airport, I think somebody's clogged the airport gauge. I, I'm almost convinced of it, uh, but that's okay. We're going to get that rain, whether it's clogged or not. It'll just have to push it through. We've got some heavy rain on our way. 2.1 inches of rain from Dan Hale and St. Francis Philly said, we are happy. I'll bet you are up there. And uh, Norman Bredenkamp, remember, called in. I told you that at 6. 1.71 inches of rain. Jamie Austin had an inch and a half of rain. Uh, it's just been heavy-duty water up there in southern Illinois. And that's good news there for us, though, obviously, left our mouth for the most part around the Evansville area, just two-tenths of an inch at best. Uh, that's going to change. Scattered showers tonight, and we're going to be seeing an overnight low of 60 degrees, uh, but we're going to have a light rain at least all night long. And northeast wind picking up at 15 to 20 tomorrow. So more rain on its way, and we've got that chance through the afternoon. I think by tomorrow night's parade, not the pet parade, but by tomorrow night's parade, the rain should be gone. Could see just a little bit of drizzle out there, and then that could last into Sunday as well. But the heavy rain will be gone by mid-afternoon tomorrow. Temperatures are going to be hanging around 70 degrees for the next seven days after that. Last one, Ron. General Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> Grant, you not, know. Not President Grant. He had a shorter beard as a general. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Huge, yeah. As a president, he let it grow out a little bit. <laughs> he did. Yeah, i go you. check out the pictures it's of that. It's the last one. Yeah, that, <laughs> it is. It's going to be the last one, guys, That's because I've now. already gotten a barber. He's in Newburgh. It's John's Barbershop, and I'm going to be sitting in that chair on Monday. We are right. looking forward to that, Ron. <laughs> I guarantee that. Okay, thanks. thanks, Ron. Well, when kids get in trouble, parents often say their kids are running with the wrong crowd. But their friends may not be the ones getting them to commit crime. Next in our cover story, find out why some kids break the law and tips on making sure our kids stay on the right track. Portions of this newscast are brought to you by Service Merchandise. Capturing the moment. VHS camcorder? A must. Diamond engagement ring to capture her heart? What you need, what you want. No place but Service Merchandise. All diamond solitaires now on sale. Half carat earrings just $3.99.90. A sparkling pendant for $5.99. Irresistible prices. Shop in store, by phone, or online. No place but service merchandise. Bar. Bar. B. Q. Bar. B. Q. Bar. B. Q. Geez, everybody's trying to steal our act these days. Whoa! Barbecue is a good thing. When people eat Shyla's delicious barbecue, they don't think about these gorgeous green legs. Bar. B. Q. Bar. B. Q. United States Senator Evan Bayh. This fall, Evansville voters have a chance to elect a proven leader as your mayor. My friend, Rick Boris. I look forward to working with Rick to make Evansville an even better place to live, work, and raise a family. So this November the 2nd, please vote for Rick Boris. And together, let's keep Evansville moving in the right direction. Boris, vote Boris, Rick Boris for Evansville. Hi, I'm... Why do some children turn to a life of crime? Many of us believe it's because they come from low-income families. But researchers believe kids start breaking the law because of a lack of attention at home, that it has nothing to do with economic status. Fox's Darielle Snipes tells us why family members' behavior could be the reason kids take a wrong turn. Here's tonight's cover story. And a lot of kids on all levels of society live very random, chaotic type of lives. Lives that just don't seem to have much meaning or any order. This group of state and county officials plus experts say kids from affluent families are more likely to lead chaotic lives. Too much money and too much free time can lead to trouble. And often, a lack of attention from parents makes kids feel they lead meaningless lives. The Columbine shootings were just a tragic example of what can happen when kids try to get noticed. They're angry and feeling deprived about the emotional unavailability, and so they compensate for that sometimes with outrageous behavior, and the message is almost, how far do I have to go to get your attention? These experts suggest parents take a more active role in their kids' lives because they are the ones who ultimately have the most effect. Work with them to develop some of the core attributes that kids who thrive share. Dozens of parents came out in search of ways to keep their kids from turning to violence. 
one mother thinks she's found at least one part of the answer. The time that you spend with the family um, and at church and, and teaching them about God and uh, is, is an important part of family life and that's kind of why we had kids to uh, spend time with them. Darielle Snipes, Fox News. And even more importantly, parents need to enforce those standards so kids have a better understanding of right and wrong. All right, Randy, thanks. Next on Fox 7 First News, a 7 on your side warning about a scam involving the Evansville Police Department. And then in our medical discoveries report, thousands of women are fighting breast cancer. Next, a report on overcoming the disease that has no cure. Here's a 7 on your side warning from the Evansville Police Department. The Bunko Fraud Unit of the Evansville Police says it's received reports of someone calling around asking people for money to buy bulletproof vests for police. The caller claims to represent the chief of police, but police say it's not a legitimate fun drive. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the strive for a cure continues. But even without a pill or a shot, there are ways to fight the disease and survive. Jerry Griffith considers herself a lucky person. In fact, she once won the lottery. But Jerry considers conquering breast cancer her biggest victory. From the minute they told me that I had cancer, it was, all right, I'm diagnosed. There's nothing else to do with it, but do what the doctor says and go about the life the best I can. And so she did. Even after doctors removed her right breast, she didn't let cancer stop her from living. So you learn to live with it the best you can, and I'm doing the best I can with what I have. Breast cancer is the second most common cancer in women. 175,000 new cases are diagnosed in the U.S. each year. But women can and are beating the disease. Dr. Rebecca Jaffe says timing is crucial. If you catch something early on, you can literally cure it. One way to detect breast cancer is through monthly self-breast exams. But women need to check themselves consistently for this to work. Mammograms are another crucial cancer tracking tool. That's how physicians found Jerry's tumor. Mammography is not 100%, nor is self-breast examination or examination from a physician. But if you link the two together, you have a far better chance of detecting things and detecting things early so that you can get cures. And it's very, very important for everyone to know that breast cancer can be cured and you can live a fruitful life even though you do have breast cancer. You go on, you don't stop living. Kentucky State Parks are doing their part, part for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Here at Audubon State Park in Henderson, all park guest rooms and cottages are equipped with self-examination cards. Special cards like these are hanging from the shower heads. They include diagrams about how to conduct a breast self-exam advice on breast care, and phone numbers to get more information. Apollo versus Hancock County, that's tonight's primetime clash. A live report in the big game next. Plus, Rich has much more than football in the Tri-State's biggest sports show. Coming up, a classic baseball playoff. Highlights of the Braves and the Astros game. Portions of this newscast are brought to you by your local Jeep dealer. What you want is a place you can find your favorite brands and service with a smile. It's Elder Beerman's Fall Sale with our lowest prices of the season. Check Thursday's paper for extra 10% off coupons. Elder Beerman's Fall Sale starts Friday. Shop 10 till 10. We've got styles for the whole family. It's what you want. It's time for Fox 7 Sports, live with Rich Miller. Another Friday night and another full schedule of high school football on tap. Time to head back to Owensboro High, or <laughs> Apollo High, that is, in Owensboro, where the Eagles were hosting Hancock County. Mark McVicker has been watching this one unfold, and he joins us live from the sideline. Mark? Well, it's been a cold, kind of rainy, miserable night, but not miserable if you're a Hancock County fan, right? Right! <laughs> It's going to be a great trip back to Lewisport and Hawesville for these people and the entire Hancock County football team because they are dominating Apollo. Just a couple of minutes left in the game, and it is Hancock County 39-7. to Let's take a look at some of the highlights to see how they did it tonight at Apollo High School. That's Ryan Jackson. 
He is the All-State candidate who is out with a broken leg. He's done for the season. He shakes hands with Travis Atwell. That was one of the problems for Apollo. The other fumbles in the first half, as they had four in the first half. That was one of them, recovered by Reggie Williams. Jimmy Owen then will pick up this fumble off the punt, and then another fumble. That's Joey Stila picking it up. Fourth turnover. Michael White comes through with a turnover as Hancock County able to turn that into an ugly night for Apollo. It was beautiful, though, when Travis Atwell got going. He gave it to Reggie Williams there, and he bursts through, gets it to the goal line. Atwell would score later, makes it six to nothing. Later on, more Atwell. Does it this time by throwing. Seth Fleener would later catch a touchdown pass, stretches out, that sets up another Atwell sneak. And then this is what makes Travis Atwell so special. Watch the patience as he sets up the defenders, cuts back not once, but twice. He's in the end zone. Atwell ran for three, threw for another, and it's all Hancock County. They lead in the fourth quarter by a score of 39 to seven, much to the delight of all of these people here who have supported this team as we bring it back here live. It wasn't the only action that was occurring, of course, in Owensboro tonight. There was another big game, Owensboro Catholic taking on Monroe County. Let's take a look at those highlights as we get a chance to see what happened at Rash Stadium. Raining there as well, and it was raining running game. Josh Foster first up the middle, and he's able to get it close where Jordan Oshowitz Punches it in on the quarterback sneak. Extra point missed, six nothing. Owensboro Catholic. Things had dried off for the Aces cheerleaders by then. And then it's more Oshowitz as he takes it down the left side and then sets up Payne time. Sean Payne, one of the best field goal kickers in the state. This a chippy, 21 yards. It's good. Owensboro Catholic leading by a score of nine to nothing. And as we bring it back out here live, once again, the big story tonight, Hancock County, they're ranked third in 3A, or three, uh, third in single A. The little school has knocked off the Giants 39 to seven with just a couple of minutes to go. And how about those Hornets, huh? <laughs> Rich, I can't hear you now, and uh, we'll just send it right back to you. Okay, sounds good, Mark. Thanks a lot. We will have uh, much more to come before the show is over. Up next, we'll check out the action in Evansville. Bossy facing a rights team looking to bounce back after their loss to North a week ago. Highlights and the scoreboard straight ahead. Wright suffered its first loss of the season last week against North. Bossy was tasting victory for the first time against Jasper at the same time. Tonight they met in the next-to-last SIAC game of the season, and this one was all right. Here comes number four, Chris Brunson. He gets to the corner and hustles all the way inside the Bulldogs' pen before they get him down. That would set up a Wright's touchdown. Todd Mattingly gets the call and scampers untouched across the goal line. The point after made it a 31 to nothing Wright's lead. But they weren't done. Bossy tries to get something going. But after the pass completion, the ball gets knocked loose. And Kyle Chumley will pick it up and rumble into the end zone. Actually, not a pass, just a run there. And there goes Mr. Chumley on his way into the end zone for a touchdown. And the Panther fans are wet but happy. The final 34 nothing rights. The two schools who call Enlil Field home squared off at the old gridiron tonight. Harrison was on a roll coming in. Memorial going in the other direction. But tonight, in the mud, a different story in the first half. Matt Hartman with the screen pass here for Memorial. They kept Harrison on their toes tonight, but there was no score in the first quarter. Memorial's defense made life rough for Harrison's quarterback, Andre Thomas, Andy Padgett, and Chris Graves combining for the sack. Memorial got a drive going midway through the second quarter. Jacob Todd rumbles up the middle for big yards, and that play would set up a field goal. Memorial led that ball game three to nothing, but Harrison comes back, and the score in this one. Harrison, a winner tonight, 22 to three. The Rockets from Broad Ripple were in town from Indianapolis to take on the Central Bears. The rain wasn't the only thing putting out the Rockets' flame tonight. Second quarter action, Central's up. 35-26 Bears tailback Jeremy Farrell rolls in for the touchdown. That puts Central at 41. And next, it's Broad Ripple's chance to score. Kerry Sanders throws to Rocket Jr. Jeremy White. They gained some ground on this play, but no touchdown. The Bears hold. Sanders tries the launch again. Scott Pennick is his target, but this one incomplete. And the last score we had was Central leading. 41 to 26 as they started the third quarter. Potentially a good matchup in the pocket athletic conference tonight. North Posey hosting South Spencer under the lights in the rain, but it was all Rebels. Screen pass here from Brock Simon out to Drew Driscoll. He breaks one tackle, then another, and then a couple of more. And once he gets to the sideline, there's nothing but 
timing him in the 90-yard dash, maybe. He's going to be challenging the school record with that one. Long night for the home crowd. South Spencer rolling it up in this one. Let's check the update. South Spencer leading it 40-6 to in the fourth quarter. Over the Wabash to Bulldog Country, Carmi hosting Fairfield. Hello, girls. Carmi had a big night. Zach Layton handing off to Brendan Pringle. He breaks through the hole to the 47, gets into the clear, and no one even close to him. He's gone. Touchdown Bulldogs to make it 13 to nothing. Fairfield looking to get back into it as the rain continued to fall. Anthony Wazinski looking here and finding Tyler Musgrave. And watch him work the hook and ladder here. A little lateral out there. David Lingefelder is going to be gone on this. But it's a trickery. Covers some 55 yards, and let's check the score on this ball game. It's a final. Carmi wins it 52 to 24. Let's check the rest of the scores now from around the Tri-State. That Heritage Hills game, by the way, being delayed because of a power outage. They haven't been able to get the second half underway. Well, forget those rumors about Tony La Russa leaving the Cardinals. He signed a two-year contract extension today to continue managing in St. Louis. The baseball playoff game this afternoon was in Houston. The Astros and Braves tied the game of peace going in. Braves leading the ball game 3-2 in the seventh, but the Astros tie it right there on the base hit. It was still 3-3 after 9, so on to extra innings. Astros load the bases with nobody out. Tony Eusebio hits a shot up the middle, but Walt Weiss makes the stop and gets the force out at the plate. Then, with two outs, John Rocker gets the clutch strikeout. They get out of the jam, and Rocker is pumped. On to the 12th inning, they went still tied at 3. Brian Jordan up for the Braves. Hit a two-run homer earlier in the game, this time a shot down the right field line. Otis Nixon scores, Brett Boone not far behind, and the Braves win it 5-3. to three. They take game three in 12 innings and take a 2-1 to one lead in the series. One of the all-time great playoff games right there. Arizona and the Mets, Mets doing it without Mike Piazza tonight. They lead game three of that series 9-2 to two over the Diamondbacks. All right. So, all kinds of stuff going on and more Sloppy football night. Yeah. It was really fun. But we've been lucky these first We really have. So kind of okay. paid our dues tonight, I guess. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Thanks, Rich. Will the rain continue through Saturday and Sunday? Or will it be another ideal fall weekend? Meteorologist Ron Rhodes is next with the forecast. On the next, Caroline in the City. I think I'm in love. Annie's new boyfriend is an ex-con. Well, you all have a past, right? I mean, <laughs> I had braces. And when Caroline has a break-in. My fax machine, my, 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 my TV, huh? I've been robbed! The gang's out to catch a thief. Gotcha! Will this break-in break Annie's heart? I gotta go get Steven. Annie, let it go. He's stealing Dell's Porsche. <laughs> on the next, Caroline in the City. Tonight at 11.30 on Fox 7. Coming up tomorrow on Fox 7 First News at 6, it's time for high school seniors to plan for their futures, but college is not the only option. We'll take a look at other choices for students. Then at 9, do you love to shop but don't have the cash? We'll have a 7 on your side consumer report on buying without going into debt. Plus, if you can't make it out to the fall festival parade, don't worry, we'll bring you all the festivities. Of course, we'll be out there tomorrow. We sure will. It'll be a lot of fun, and hopefully it won't rain on our parade. Let's find out. Here's Ron. Well, it is going to rain on one of the parades, it looks like right now. The pet parade, it could be a problem tomorrow morning. Tomorrow night, though, the parade shouldn't be a problem. Of course, that goes rain or shine, so it doesn't matter one way or another. Uh, that parade is going on. I think the rain, the heaviest rain, is going to be going by tomorrow night. But look at this. We still have a lot of heavy rain that's working its way up uh, from the south. As we get the broader picture here on the, the uh, regional radar, you can see even though it's starting to taper off a little bit to our north, we still have a mass of rain that's headed our way. We've got a lot of rain to wade through over the next uh, 24 hours, really. It's going to be uh, uh, close to, uh, well, actually, uh, more like 20 hours. Here's a look at the weekend weather forecast, because the heavy rain is going to be gone by late afternoon. And you can see uh, by Sunday, even though there's a chance of rain, it's mainly just going to be drizzle with temperatures right around 70 degrees both days. Watch out for the wind tomorrow, too. It's really going to pick up, because the front hasn't moved through, and it's going to move through in the afternoon. You'll notice it. All, All right. right. A couple okay. more scores coming in. Hopkins Central beat Paducah Tillman 27-7. to Madisonville leads Marshall County 35-19 in the fourth quarter. All right. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Good night. We're the Joneses from Bergen, Kentucky, and we want $100,000 playing Powerball. <laughs>
And we closed on the daycare the week after we got the money for the lottery. So it was real close and really good timing. Couldn't have been at a better time. Which I guess any time's a good time to win $100,000. <laughs> so I wanted to get some stuff for the kids. So we bought, it was fairly expensive for the playground equipment. Might as well be you. Hi, Mark. I'm watching Fox 7. I'm watching Fox 7. Hey, I'm watching Fox 7. I'm watching Fox 7. I'm watching Fox 7. Hi, I'm Larry Brooks, and I'm watching Fox 7 because I want to be the next Xeno Warrior Princess. I'm watching Fox 7. I'm watching Fox 7. Hey, I'm Turner Watson. And I'm watching Fox 7. We're watching Fox 7. Everybody's watching Fox 7. Hi, I'm Michael Waltrip. I'm watching Fox 7.